It's the day before the presidential election, and there's a celebration going on. Eight new apartment blocks containing more than 360 flats are being officially handed over to new residents. And it's quite clear who's to thank for these new buildings. The president, Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov. The streets of the Turkmen capital Ashgabat aren't so much paved with gold, more clad in white marble. You can drive around Ashgabat for quite some time looking at brand new white apartment blocks, ornate buildings and monuments. Everywhere you go, there are signs that this city has been overhauled in the last 20 years. An economy fueled by the fourth largest gas reserves in the world has paid for this transformation, creating a society where domestic power supplies are heavily subsidized and petrol is 30 cents a litre. On a visit supervised by officials, they also took us to see this, a new multi-billion dollar sports complex, which will host the Asian Indoor Games later this year. But according to critics, it's all at a price. The state controls most aspects of political life, business and the media. It's third from bottom in the World Press Freedom Index, just above North Korea and Eritrea. And they say there's no democracy. President Berdy Mohamedov won 97% of the vote in the latest election, standing against eight other candidates, including two from opposition parties. But international observers say there were no problems. И прогресс очевиден. Они стали более демократичными, они стали более открытыми. Они проходят в обстановке конкурентности. Officials were keen to present to us a positive image of Turkmenistan. There was also a visit to the International Akalteke Hippodrome, where the president is shown in action on horseback looking down on the arena that shows off the country's national emblem, famed for its speed and endurance. Now Ashgabat is full of monuments to that history, including this one. The Arch of Neutrality, which includes a gold statue of former President Sapamurat Niyazov. Officials were reluctant to talk about the man ridiculed in the West for his cult of personality and his decision to rename the days of the week and months of the year. But maybe this testament to going it alone and a neutral foreign policy shows best how Turkmenistan seems determined to do things its own way. Andrew Hopkins for the Newsmakers in Ashgabat, Turkmenistan. Well, joining me now from Prague is Faru Yusupov. He's the acting director of Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty service in the Turkmen language. Faru, good of you to join us. Thanks so much. So 97% turnout. The president, Gurbanguly Berdi Mohamedov, got 98% of the vote. On a scale of zero to 100, how free and fair were those elections in Turkmenistan? Uh, well, Imran, I did not observe uh, directly these uh, elections, but uh, uh, my colleagues in, in Ashgabat were under very uh, strict circumstances uh, uh, with a very high risk to their well-being. They tr managed to visit several uh, polling stations, and uh, according to my colleagues, to whom uh, I do not uh, have any basis not to believe, the turnout was quite low, very low, lower than the, the previous elections. And uh, uh, the, if you ask me about free and fair, I mean, these in Turkmenistan, in, in a country like Turkmenistan, you cannot organize free and fair elections uh, uh, to, to begin with, because everything is centered around one person, around the cult of personality of one 
first one single person, which is uh, President Kurbanguli Berdun Muhammadov. Mm -hmm. I've got a newspaper, the Turkmenistan Post. My colleague uh, Andrew Hopkins brought back after his deployment. It's fascinating because what the first thing I noticed from the newspaper here is on the front page, on the day of voting, you have the other candidates, right? You have the under, other candidates. Most of them are looking down. One of them's only looking up, but he looks as if sort of he's been caught voting rather than happy. There's only one person who looks happy and looks uh, in a state of bliss and peace. I guess, you know, you don't have to speak the language to know who's going to win that election from that. Um, my question to you then is, my question is, I guess, are the other candidates just props? Were they just props in this process? What do you think? Uh, yeah, you, you, um, you are right. I mean, they were props. They were just the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, things of the ritual. Uh, the pr elections in Turkmenistan uh, are uh, ritual, and, and they do not... Uh, uh, represent the, the will of the people, and uh, but the the uh, uh, these uh, eight candidates, eight uh, so-called rivals, they were not known to anyone. I mean, you can ask even even my colleagues, journalists, they would not uh, name you uh, uh, each of them, and uh, they were there just to to uh, pretend, just to uh, make a show that there is some sort of democracy, but there is not. Mm -hmm. So let's say, okay, there's very little political freedom, there's very little um, journalistic freedom, and so on. But looking at some of the stats and some of the developments in, in the country over the past few years, he's given basic services to most, he's built infrastructure, reformed the education system, ensures many local kids are proficient in Turkmen, Russian, and English, for example. Would you say any of those things are good things? Are you willing to give him any credit? There is, uh, I would correct you, there is uh, not little freedom. There is no, no freedom. Uh, freedom of media is non-existent. Uh, freedom uh, of speech is non-existent. Freedom of will is non-existent. And those uh, uh, reforms that you are saying, that you, that you mentioned, um, but no one can guarantee you that those reforms were successful. Uh, the, uh, every single system in, in the country is corrupt. Every, uh, whenever, wherever you go, you have to pay for uh, all the b basic services that the country says are free, uh, uh, be it uh, uh, medical services, be it uh, if, if you want to uh, get employed, or if you want uh, to, to get to some uh, uh, education, education institution, everything you, you have to pay. And uh, well, for, as, as an example for freedom of uh, media, I can tell you that two of my colleagues are imprisoned at the moment. And uh, one is uh, serving a sentence of three years. It's been one and a half years. And another one was uh, arrested about two months ago and the folk on the absurd charges of possessing chewing tobacco. Wow, chewing tobacco. Okay, Faru Yusupov, thanks so much for your insights uh, into Turkmenistan. We hope to have you on the program again. Thanks for joining us from Prague.